Hello, welcome to a new creature tutorial. This tutorial is going to cover 2D character animation transfer. Now I get this question quite often from some of my users where they have a character animation like so, like this walking elephant over here. They finish the animation, they're quite happy with it, but they want to have a new character which shares a very similar rig to this elephant and they want to be able to transfer the animation itself over to the new character. In other words, they want to retarget this 2D character animation onto another 2D character. Now this is a very useful feature as you can imagine because this allows you to reuse animations and also you can transfer your current animation to the new character and then tweak it a bit more to get a new animation without spending all the time go you know starting from the beginning. The process we're going to use is to use the motion transfer function which has also been updated in the past few releases so it's now even more powerful which allows you to do not only do 3D to, 3D to 2D motion tra transfer but now also 2D to 2D motion transfer. So we'll get into that the whole the whole process the whole workflow of how to do that I'm really excited to present this new workflow to you guys because because I think it's going to save you guys a lot of time now I want to emphasize again that this feature is targeted for very similar rigs that is we're going to actually today transfer this elephant's walking gait onto this triceratops over here this is also a quadruped so we're going to transfer quadruped to quadruped okay this works again for similar rigs you are you aren't going to be able to transfer a say a flying bird onto a walking elephant that doesn't work because those characters have very different rigs okay so without further ado let's get started with this tutorial right so let's say you have this elephant here and you have the animation done and you want to transfer it to another character what do you do the first thing you need to do is to actually export this character out as an FBX asset, right? As we know, Creature has the very powerful functionality of exporting to GLTF and FBX in addition to the regular game engine formats. So what we do is move our mouse over to export, and this time you select images and video, and there's many tabs here. You pick the FBX GLTF option, and you supply an output file name. I'm going to call it elephants, maybe FBX or something. Yeah, and then just click record and you are done. Okay, so here is our Triceratops quadruped character. It has a quadruped rig just like the elephant. And we are going to transfer, motion transfer the 2D animation of the elephant FBX onto this character. So what we do now is we move our mouse, our mouse over to the motion transfer button, click on it and we import in our elephant asset, right? So this is the elephant FBX. If you play it, you can see that's the elephant animation. Now it's a jumbo of bones, but that's just how it is because it's a 2D rig and 2D rigs in actually in some cases, the way the bones are structured when they are exported into like an FBX or GLTF 3D format, they look slightly, I would say, I wouldn't say the word is messier, but maybe a bit more jumbled up. <laughs> but don't worry, you can see that it actually replicates replicates your your character quite well the elephant animation right so we're going to actually retarget this guy onto this guy okay now there's a couple of new options now that are provided for the motion transfer tool you can see for example you can actually pick the different animations you can pick different animations now and so you can have multiple animations in say an FBX file and of course you can now pick different animations from that file so it not only just supports BVH but FBX you can also pick what you call the pose mode now by default it's going to pick the correct mode but in certain cases for FBX's let's say you you export an FBX from Maya or some other application you might want to switch between the different modes to get the correct posture or pose for this character but in the case of all creature FBX's creature will actually pick the right pose so you don't have to you know, check anything. Now the options above are actually explained in the previous motion transfer tutorial, so I encourage you to watch those. These features again have been enhanced and also made a lot more stable and usable now. So in general, the output, the quality of the motion retargeting for these new updates have improved the retarget retargeting by quite a lot and we'll see so in a moment. 
Now, I'm going to start retargeting the front legs to give you a sample of how it works. As usual, you can, let me just show you, you can actually drag your target character around. You can size it for easy, easy placement. And this basically allows you to essentially retarget more easily. You can also zoom in to certain bones so you can actually drag and retarget more easily. Now, the basics of using this motion retargeter are again covered in the previous tutorial. So if you want to have an introduction to how this works, please watch those tutorials. I'm assuming you've already seen those. But again, I will go through most of the basic steps, so don't worry about it. Okay, so let's start retargeting the front legs. Now, I like to actually scroll through the frames, as you can see, so I can easily tell because the bones, the bones are, there's lots of bones in the elephant skeleton, right? So you want to know which bones are which. So I think, as in I have decided, I'm going to retarget the front leg, so I'm going to drag this guy over here and point in here, and then the, the next lower limb, and the next lower limb here, right? And then I'm going to target the other, the other leg as well, like so. Right. Okay, so at this point, you don't actually have to retarget all the limbs for testing. You can just retarget, say, a pair of limbs and see how it looks like. Just move your mouse over to Run All, and it will transfer, motion transfer, attempt to motion transfer those two limbs, and let's see what we get. It's actually pretty good. Look at that. Right? It actually got the two limbs mostly correct. It actually looks like the elephant gait, and it transfer quite well. transfers quite well to this dinosaur over here. Okay, so next I'm actually going to show you a time-lapse video of how the transfer for the, for the entire character was done because there's lots of bones. I don't want to bore you with it, but you can see the whole process of me transferring the bones over to the entire character. And notice I also have transferred Late, much later on, I transfer also the spine and the bones, uh, you know, bones of the character as well as the head and and the and, part, and the, the the first part of the tail to give it more of a bobbing motion, right? Also, crucially, I also end up transferring the root bone, as you'll see in a moment. So that all gives you a a, a quick insight in how it's done. Now, after you click Run All, you will see that the character actually looks quite similar to the elephant gate. So we've actually successfully transferred over the animation of the elephant onto this Triceratops dinosaur over here. So I think that's pretty cool. Okay, so with the character fully transferred, we're back to the transferred character after closing the motion transfer window. And this is how the character looks like. I think it's, it's actually pretty cool. You can see that the character has mostly transferred over from the elephant onto this triceratops and the animation actually maps quite well, right? You get the root motion, you get the slight bobbing of the head and the tail, but we can of course make it even better with creature. That's the whole point of using creature's procedural motor system. So why don't we go ahead and actually add in band physics for the tail just to give it a bit more a bit more character, if you will. And I'm going to up the damping on these guys. And so now we actually have a wobbling tail. I think that's pretty cool. And again, you can you can keep adding more secondary motion to the to the character. That's what creature is for. Like we can probably attempt to add in, say, another bend physics onto the head. And just to make it not you know wobble that much, we can up the Let's see what we get. So, yeah, or maybe reduce the damping. But you get the idea. So from here on, it's literally just tweaking your character to make it more lifelike. And you, as you can see, with just a few simple strokes of adding, you know, more bend physics or rotate cycles, motors, or whatever you want, you can actually literally transfer a different character. In, the, in this case, an elephant, an elephant quadruped animation, onto the animation of your Triceratops. I think that's quite impressive and very powerful. This feature will no doubt save you lots of time for transferring similar character animations onto differing onto other characters so you don't have to repeat the whole process and this also means you can focus more on the details of your new character. And that's really it. This is I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. This is a very powerful feature and I hope you have a good time animating. Thanks for watching.